Today's Q&A is so important for people without medical education to understand how medicine and opportunistic infections work. After COVID happened, a farmer who used ivermectin on his ranch created a huge group of followers promoting ivermectin for treatment of numerous conditions, but most notably, cancers of all kinds. He also told people that ivermectin was natural and had no side effects. In my opinion, this assumption is not only inaccurate, but it's very dangerous. In people's desperation to cut big pharma and drugs from their lives, they dangerously jumped at hope by an online personality with no background or studies supporting to his claims. This doesn't mean that one needs a medical background to understand medical issues, but it does mean that a foundational background of how the body works related to both disease and pharmacodynamics is beneficial. You've heard me say many times that the body is a miracle. I say this because there are numerous factors that affect whether a drug is effective against a specific condition. From the time that drug enters our bodies, there are at least 20 different highly variable factors that affect whether it's going to get to where it needs to go, do what it needs to do, and leave. I haven't spent a lot of time on this man's site, but I can tell you what I know. First, there are side effects to ivermectin and overdose can be fatal, which is specifically concerning when people are taking a product formulated for an 1,800-pound animal with a ruminant digestive system. The oils in the paste inhibits absorption and further metabolism in humans. If you've ever noticed, oral medicines for humans are rarely oil-based. Cows, however, have a ruminant stomachs, and the rumen microbes break down oils to allow absorption. Then there's the concern about delayed absorptions and accumulation due to the oils. It's just not a smart formulation for us to be taking. Second, ivermectin is an FDA-approved drug made by FDA-approved facilities. So the manufacture and distribution of the drug is overseen by the FDA, whether it's for human use or veterinary use. It is not a natural product. Third, I agree that there are studies supporting a parasitic connection to certain cancers. However, there are two faulty assumptions in this blanket connection. First, studies have indeed isolated parasites in various cancers, but there's a different parasite that's been related in different types of cancer, kind of like how you aren't likely to have a strep infection in your urinary tract. The second faulty assumption is that ivermectin works on all parasites. In fact, they are like bacteria in this aspect also, just like all bacteria are not sensitive to the same antibiotic. That is why doctors sometimes do a culture and sensitivity or C and S test. So with this predicate, let's look at a question from a very sweet member of our community that often sits in the background but blesses us sometimes with her beautiful energy. Her name is Ali42D, and I hope you will send her your love and prayers. Breast cancer about one and a half years ago. A lump was removed from the right breast, and it had not metastasized and was not in the lymph nodes. I had been taking Evermectin paste and continued to do so. I used castor oil compresses to help shrink the tumor over a three-month period. Then, I had the lump removed. I guess my point is, I haven't been back to get a checkup since the operation. No blood tests, nothing. I've been too scared of doctors and try to be my own doc. They had tried to get me to take preventative radiation and tamoxifen, I think, and I refused it all. I really wasn't going to get it removed until my mum convinced me to. I didn't want to get all caught up in the system. Can you tell if the ivermectin paste got rid of the parasites? I heard they are one and the same. Parasites equal cancer. Thank you. I personally have not seen enough evidence to definitively conclude that all cancers are caused by parasites, but they have been isolated in cancer cells, and studies have shown a higher incidence of various parasites in different cancer cells. 
In 2015, researchers at the CDC reported a case where cancerous cells originating from a tapeworm were found in a human patient. The patient was immune compromised and developed tumors containing malignant tapeworm cells. This was the first confirmed instance of cancer cells from a parasite leading to human disease. Also, certain parasitic infections have been linked to an increased risk of cancer. Liver flukes are associated with bile duct cancer, and schistosoma hematobium infection is linked to bladder cancer. Regarding breast cancer, parasites have also been associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Notable examples include Toxoplasma gondii, or T. gondii. Studies have suggested a link between T. gondii infection and an elevated risk of various cancers, including breast cancer. The parasite may influence cancer development by modulating the host's immune response and inducing chronic inflammation. Research indicates that tamoxifen, a common breast cancer treatment, can increase the parasite burden so tamoxifen can be contraindicated if you have Toxoplasma gondii. So I think you made a wise decision on the tamoxifen. Tamoxifen modulates estrogen receptors and affects lipid metabolism, which might inadvertently create favorable conditions for T. gondii proliferation. In my humble opinion, cancer patients should be screened for T. gondii before tamoxifen is started. I'm sure few doctors do this, Another parasite associated with breast cancer is Toxocara canis, or T. canis. Animal studies have demonstrated that T. canis infection can enhance tumor development, potentially through modulation of the tumor immune microenvironment. Infected mice developed larger tumors, indicating a possible link between T. canis infection and increased cancer risk. Lastly, bovine leukemia virus or BLV DNA in human breast tissue samples have been isolated with a higher prevalence in individuals with breast cancer compared to those without. This association suggests a potential link between BLV exposure and breast cancer development. However, it's mainly found in cattle and consequently, there's been no treatment studied. So, the supposition that parasites can cause cancer is plausible and definitely something to be considered. The problem is that lay people see something and start pushing the buzzword ivermectin for all cancers. Treatment. Here's the problem. Albendazole or ivermectin are effective against certain parasitic worms, such as roundworms, tapeworms, and flukes. But they are not typically effective against protozoan parasites like Toxoplasma gondii. So, if T. gondii is suspected, Pyrimethamine, also known as Daraprim, is an effective treatment. However, if the cancer is caused by T. canis, anthelmintics like albendazole or albenza and mebendazole or vermox could be effective. BLV has not been studied enough to know what might be effective if it's found to be causative, but there are many highly effective antivirals these days, so a course of an antiviral might be prudent. But the bottom line that many people don't get is that, as mentioned, there is no one drug that kills all bacteria, and not all cancers are associated with the same parasite. Based on the studies that I found, ivermectin does not appear to be effective for parasites that might be causative in breast cancer. I would say that a rational treatment would be mebendazole and pyrimethamine and perhaps an antiviral to cover all potential parasites that have been found. In any event, there are ways to identify parasites in the body that you might want to consider. PCR testing can detect Toxoplasma gondii DNA in blood and tissue. Also, serology tests can be done. Namely, IgM antibodies indicate a recent infection, while IgG antibodies suggest past exposure. T. canis To detect T. canis, which are roundworms, microscopic examination of stools and antibodies in the blood can identify them. Once the causative parasite is identified, you know the proper anthelmintic, but you need a dose. There has been very little experience or studies on long-term use of most anthelmintics because one or two doses kills them. 
I advocate caution in taking anthelmintics, regardless of what has been disseminated on the internet. I tried both ivermectin and fenbendazole on my little dog's lymphoma. During the use of ivermectin, the cancer metastasized and neither drug could stop the growth or even hold it down anymore once it metastasized. Additionally, I was gradually increasing her dose of ivermectin because it appeared to have some efficacy at first, but I had to discontinue it because she was having jerking neurological toxicity. My point is that people must be very careful with these drugs because a person can overdose on this stuff if they don't know what they are doing. If you had a good holistic doctor, all three drugs, albendazole, pyrimethamine, and mebendazole, that would be potentially effective in breast cancer are available for both animal and human use, so he or she could prescribe you around. As you know, it will be difficult to find this kind of cooperation with an oncologist or even a family doctor. You would need someone with a holistic specialty. Regarding animal preparations, all three are available for domestic animals closer to the strengths of the human formulations, so the potential for toxicity is much less than medicine for a cow. Side effects are always a concern, so one must do their research, but I have a feeling that you are one of those people. Additionally, you want to listen to sulfagio frequencies, cut back on meat to alkalinize the body, watch funny movies every night and laugh a lot. I applaud you for being so brave, my friend. Until next time, remember this thought. The body has the ability to heal itself, but it needs the right environment to do so.